Welcome school leaders and teachers. We all know that FLN has become a national mission in which the role of the school leader is critical. This course has visualized school leaders as pedagogical leaders to meet the expectations and demands emerging from our commitment to strengthen foundation literacy and numeracy among young children of the age group of 3 to 9 years. Let us discuss about the prerequisites for becoming a pedagogical leader. We have with us Professor Sunita Chuk and Dr. Charu Smita Malik. I am Dr. Pooja Singhal. Professor Sunita, who is a pedagogical leader? What does he and she do? Dr. Pooja, pedagogical leader is a person having deep understanding of knowledge and transaction skills to lead the pedagogies of different subjects and disciplines. The aim of pedagogical leader is to create a conducive learning environment for all children and help them attain desired learning outcomes. For this, well-planned pedagogical practices are required that can contribute in holistic development of child, including all developmental domains, cognitive, socio-emotional, language and literacy, psychomotor, numeracy, and creative development that are interlinked with each other. School leaders have to have a knowledge about what the child needs at the age of three, what kind of the emotional, you know, needs of the child, what kind of a health needs of the child, and what kind of a learning pedagogy for the children of the age of three to six years. Ma'am, now I want to know that what is the importance of pedagogical leader in the context of foundation literacy and numeracy? Dr. Pooja, as you know, the foundational stage of children's education is crucial for their cognitive, socio-emotional and creative development. The learners belonging to the age group of 3 to 9 years are beginning their life path. Hence, school processes must accord them with exposure, experimentation and free will to learn new skills. As children progress from the age group 3 to 6 years, where the predominant pedagogy is that of play way, they can be given different kind of toys so that the play way methodology can be adopted in the school. During 6 to 9 years of age, their foundational literacy and numeracy skills are strengthened. Further, these pedagogies are not based on chalk and talk method, but focus on activity-based learning and exposure to experimentation. For example, they can be given some kind of a blocks where they can learn as to the colors. They can also learn the counting from that. To facilitate this, a pedagogical leadership needs to collaborate with preschool and primary school teachers, Anganwadi workers, Palwatika teachers, educational functionaries, and child development project officers. I hope, Dr. Pooja, you got the answer to your question. Yes, madam. This gives us clarity on why pedagogical leader is needed for young children. Dr. Charu, I would like to know that what must be the perspective of a pedagogical leader? How can she create a vision for her school? You know, Dr. Pooja, vision building is a core element of leading a school. Since the foundational stage of children's education requires support and contribution of several stakeholders such as Balwatika teachers, preschool teachers, school head, CDPO, parents, community and education officers at the block and the district level, a school leader must be able to bring all these stakeholders together on a common platform and converse around the issues of child development. The vision of a school leader of a school must be to prepare the children of 3 to 9 years with strong skills of foundational literacy and numeracy. This would enable the children to gain learning competencies for grade 3 and effectively transit into grade 4. A futuristic and at the same time a practical vision helps the school leadership team to realize the goals within a specific time frame. An example of a vision statement could be build a safe and happy environment for children where they can explore, experiment and learn skills of foundational literacy and numeracy. Dr. Pooja, 
I know you have researched on leadership attributes. What, according to you, can be some of the basic leadership attributes of a pedagogical leader? Dr. Charu, since we are dealing with the children of 3 to 9 years of age, it is crucial that one of the core attributes be that of a positive and a flexible mindset. Within a positive framework, a school leader and teachers need to be flexible in both their mindset and as well as in their approach. We know that the attention span of children of 3 to 6 years of age is very short and they need to be engaged primarily through play-based pedagogies. It is often seen that the children switch to multiple objects or perceptions of the outer world. A leader must ensure and coach their teachers to be facilitators in the child's journey. A rigid approach may work against children's dispositions and lead to the child's disinterest and dropout. Other attributes of school leaders for foundational stage can be like taking initiative, bringing people together on common platform, building trust, understanding emotions and feelings, keen observer, understanding developmental needs of children, openness, understanding of pedagogical leadership. Yes, correct. Let us delve deeper into pedagogical leadership. Dr. Pooja, what are the pedagogical approaches that can be employed for learning teaching processes of children of 3 to 9 years of age group? Dr. Charu, there are various pedagogies that can be employed for the children of 3 to 9 years of age group like theme-based, play-based, activity-based, project-based and storytelling method. These approaches are very helpful in developing creativity and competencies among young children. If we talk about storytelling method, this has the potential of developing emotional intelligence and enable children to understand human behavior and relationships. In addition, short stories centering around animals and interactions of human, animals, plants can relate concepts to the real world experiences. Children are able to learn new vocabulary and language structures. Next is play-based approach, which is based on the natural phenomenon of the children, that is their inclination towards playful activities. This is helpful for the children to explore, discover and solve problems in playful manner. For example, playing hide and seek with their friends helps them to understand the concept of team, coordination and critical thinking. Or if we talk about theme-based approach in which Various areas of curriculum are linked together and combined within a theme. Through theme, children get to recognize their own unique strength and explore multiple ways of learning. For example, considering fruits and vegetable as a theme, a teacher can facilitate learning the concept of colors, shapes, numbers, sizes, vocabulary, etc. Dr. Pooja, I would like to add that you know the children should be given the stories and the poems in their local context and in their local language, especially when we are considering the children of three to nine years, then that makes them more friendly to the school environment. Dr. Charu, what are the initial steps for a school leader to assess and plan for foundation literacy and numeracy activities? Dr. Pooja, in order to facilitate children accomplish learning competencies, first the school leaders and teachers need to be aware of developmental needs of children. Each child is different and has her own pace of learning. For instance, some children speak clearly at the age of three, while some may be able to do scribbling well. These characteristics of children progress with age and there is difference in abilities of younger and older children. Teachers need to understand this natural process of child development and changing needs of the child. The second is to adopt developmentally appropriate practices as per the need of a child and its prior planning is always beneficial for better outcomes. Pedagogical leaders ensure that teachers plan their activities in a phased manner, which implies that a teacher must gradually introduce new concepts with the child or we can say that they can move from simple to more complex concepts. For this, they can emphasize on creating interactive learning through classrooms, including print material, accessible toys, and other resources like objects, puzzles, etc. Toy-based or game-based pedagogy is helpful in engaging the child of three to six years of age group in the learning process, while experiential and art-based learning is more valuable for younger learners 
of the age group of 6 to 9 years. Ma'am, since you are the most experienced, what do you think is the most important expectation from a school leader who has to strengthen foundation literacy and numeracy in his or her school? Dr. Charu, since foundational literacy and numeracy is going to be introduced, you know, for the first time, then there are multiple expectations from the school leaders. As we know that the leadership is a process of exerting influence on self, others and school circumstances. As a leader of the primary or the elementary school, a school head is expected to bring positive changes in how she or he perceives children of such a tender age, his or her understanding of developmental needs of children of 3 to 9 years of age and what is expected of a school in terms of infrastructure, resources and print-rich environment. Most importantly, influence teachers of the primary school and Palwatika preschool teachers to act as facilitators in strengthening foundational literacy and numeracy. At this stage of education, a school leader must have the requisite knowledge, skills and dispositions to network with the community, parents and other stakeholders to create a conducive learning environment at both school and home. She or he must also act as the focal point of contact for both the educational functionaries such as block education officer and the child development program officer of the ICDS scheme. Building trust and understanding interpersonal relations is equally important while networking with parents and community. Friends, hope this discussion with Professor Sunita Chup and Dr. Char Usmita Malik helped clarify the concept of pedagogical leader. A pedagogical leader along with his or her team builds a collaborative vision and develops a clear roadmap on various strategies such as assessing developmental needs of children, employing different age-appropriate pedagogies to strengthen FLN skills, designing assessments as learning, networking with parents, community and system level functionaries. All these areas of intervention will help in building competencies among children to prepare them for later grades of schooling. However, the most important aspect to remember is that a pedagogical leader has to develop a conducive environment where interactions between child to child and child to adult are fear free and meaningful conversation so that children learn, co-create, explore and experiment in a joyful manner.